Hey guys, I hope you're doing well. My name's Hikari and today we're going to be talking about applying to art schools as an international student. Now, if I've made this video on time, it's probably September and a lot of you are probably starting your application or already applying or really super duper stressed about the fact that you should be applying. And I wanted to make this video because I've been there and these videos were really helpful in my application process from the school year 2022 to 2023. And honestly, without these videos, I wouldn't have been as encouraged or as motivated. So I hope that this video can help some of you guys and that you guys can take bits and pieces of whatever applies to you. The schools that I applied to and got accepted into were MICA, CCA, and Emily Carr University of Art and Design, or BCUAD. I picked these three schools because there was a lot of support and financial assistance for international students, which would probably be my first tip. If you want it, make sure you look for scholarships for international students. Most schools have a different page for international applicant scholarships and scholarships in general. And some art schools that I was also looking at, like RISD or CalArts, which are still great schools of course, don't have as much scholarship opportunity for international students and that was something that was really important to me. So I didn't want to apply to them, except I did apply to CalArts, which I'll, I'll talk about later. Anyways, another reason for applying to these three schools was just that I enjoyed their vibe. I looked at their social media, students posting on their social media or the website itself. I just got a really good vibe and atmosphere was really fun and these were schools that I actually wanted to go to and that would be something that probably goes without saying but is another tip is make sure you're applying to schools that you actually want to go to because that's key and that'll help you stay motivated through this process as well. So as I said earlier, I did apply to CalArts and I did the famous sketchbook, CalArts sketchbook experience, which I might post about um, in a YouTube video in the future because I actually am really proud of that sketchbook, but I'm not surprised I didn't get in because it's CalArts, you know? I applied there because I want to do animation in the future. So it just kind of made sense to still try applying, even if I was pretty sure I wasn't gonna get in. And through this, I actually realized something that I think a lot of us can take away from is that applying for art schools is never a waste of time, which is part of what's great about it. So in the CalArts application, I had to finish a whole sketchbook and it really challenged me to try new things and try for technique rather than just drawing whatever I wanted. And I also did a artist statement and figure studies because those were a requirement for applying to CalArts. And even though I didn't get in, doing these things really helped me for the rest of my portfolios, like for Micah, CCA, and Lacar. All of these, it really helped that I focused on technical things and I worked on this CalArts portfolio. So I think it's great that even if you decide not to apply to a certain school or you just don't get into a school, it's never a waste of time that you applied there in the first place because you got a whole portfolio and application out of it and you grew in your skill. So it's never a bad thing. And I think that's something that's great about applying to art schools. Now for more portfolio related advice. I think my biggest tip for international students is to set up online portfolio reviews with academic counselors from the school you want to apply to. So I was able to do this for MICA and CCA and I think setting up a portfolio review is really important for mainly three reasons. The first is pretty obvious. You get to ask general questions about the application process and about their school. And I think that's really important for international students especially because at least for me, I didn't really have anyone else applying to art schools in my school and my admission officers like at the high school I was at. They were great, I really loved them, but they didn't have many resources or support for kids trying to go to art school. So being able to talk to the representatives from the schools individually was really helpful. And especially after the COVID times, setting up online calls is kind of normal and more casual now. So 
I really think it's something everyone should do. The second reason is that you get to see what each individual school is looking for. So this can be things in like what type of art they like, but also what type of formatting do they want for the portfolio. For example, in my MICA portfolio, I put several images, several pieces in one slide. So I'll show an example here. But even though I could submit 20 slides on my portfolio, I had more than 20 pieces that I was showing them. And my academic counselor from MICA was telling me that they have the idea of more the better. And they are cohesive in a certain theme, but also you can see a bunch of them in one side. However, for other schools like CCA and Emily Carr, I didn't do this as much. So you're able to get insights like this when you're talking to a representative from the school. And lastly, I think it's really important just to see what other people get from your art. You are the artist. You know why you made something, you know how you made something, and your friends and family might know because they know you. They know you as a person, so they have that context. But these people you're applying to or these people you're calling on your portfolio review, they have no idea about you. They're complete strangers and seeing how these people take your art and how they understand your art is really important in learning how to describe the art in the description section of your portfolio or just how to present a certain piece. I have certain pieces that I'll show later that I just took a photo of straight on, but then while talking, I realized that the special part of it is that it's layered, so I needed some angled photos of it. And I wouldn't really have thought of that unless I showed my art to a complete stranger. And it's also just really nice to get encouragement and sometimes critique about your art because, you know, you don't get this kind of opportunity very much unless you show your art to other people and I'm guessing if you're applying to art school, you're an artist. I think all artists need to um, experience this before they apply or make a portfolio, and it's really helpful. Now, when you're doing these portfolio reviews, something that's important is keeping track of your art somehow. Most of you are probably not going to use Slide Room to show it, but I used Notion. This is how I organized the art that I did, and inside each page, I put uh, process photos and some photos from different angles to show what the art is like so that my portfolio review admission counselor can help me see what kind of way of photographing it would be the best. And also for a lot of these, I did write descriptions just so I could get a head start on like what is the most important point about this art that I want to write in the description section of my portfolio. So having this type of way to keep track of it is really helpful when you're doing these calls. Now for more portfolio related advice. So your portfolio is going to look a lot different depending on the school you apply to. Some schools might be more technique focused, which means they want to see high skill, while other schools might be more conceptual focused, which is when they want to see your thought process and your concept as an artist. Some schools want to see more variety in what you do and the range of your artistic skill, while other schools want to see you focus in on one thing and have high technique in that. So that's something you need to look at the school website for or watch these types of videos for to see what the school you're applying to is looking for. And of course, you can ask the admission officer in portfolio reviews and stuff like that too. The schools I applied to were more on the conceptual side and more on the we like range type of school, which really helped me because I have a bunch of different art from different areas. So applying to this type of school really helped. So when I was picking my portfolio pieces, I focused on showing my thought process and my unique interests as an artist, which is something you should keep in mind. Even if it is for a more technical school than a conceptual school, I think it's really important that you show who you are not what random people on YouTube or Pinterest or stuff like that. What unique interests and passions do you have? And you want to show that in your portfolio. You want to make sure it comes through in your portfolio. And something you should know before I go into my portfolio is that I over explain a lot, as maybe you can tell from this video. So these descriptions might be on the longer side for some of these. And I don't really have advice on how long your description should be, but I think you should use it. 
Let's get to the actual portfolio. So the selection and order of pieces was actually different for each school that I applied to. So I'll be going through CCA's order and covering the rest of them at the end. This is my first piece called Nature's Blueprint. It's a sketch of a cicada shell, and I'm just gonna read what it says in the description. Every cicada shell is a leftover from one insect's transformation, each with its unique size and pose. The fine details in these shells have encouraged me to look at nature for inspiration. So much of technology and art comes from humans' observations of the creation around them. Therefore, I believe nature is the best blueprint for our creativity. The top image is a spread from my sketchbook with my observations of all the cicada shells I collected last summer. The bottom is the blueprint style drawing of a cicada shell. Pretty straightforward and this was the piece that I was most confident in and really passionate about so I decided to put it at the top. Next is the cosmic mushroom which is a short animation which I'll play here. <laughs> The audio is from Cosmic Sands by Corey Wong featuring Tom Mish, which is a great song I would recommend you listen to. And I wrote, When I heard this song, I could only imagine a mushroom bopping to the beat. The image was so clear in my mind that I had to animate the first part. I tried to capture the bouncy and groovy feeling from the song's intro. The next piece was the paper ukiyo-e. And this one, I included the actual photo of the art piece from the top. And then on the side, I put angled photos of it to show the dimension because that was a very important part of this piece. The pose and inspiration from Rainbow in Spring by Kuniyoshi Utagawa. When I was younger, I was more interested in Western art. So in recent years, I have tried to look into art from my home country, Japan. In this piece, I cut out colored paper and pasted the pieces together in layers to explore the flatness of Japanese ukiyo-e. I thought it would be interesting if not every piece was cut and stacked on top of each other like regular collage, but if some were layered underneath the blue base paper. The papers were stacked in an unconventional order. For example, the yellow hair piece is on top of the hair, however, the yellow paper was put under the black paper. By stacking in this way, I aimed to bring interest to the piece and mimic the subtle depth in so many ukiyo-e that inspire me. In this description, I think you can see that I gave credit to the original art and the original artist. And that's something I also did for the previous one with the music. So if you do have inspiration from other artists or are using something, make sure you make that clear. It's not a legal move if it's not just like a carbon copy of it. The next piece is called Different Perspectives. This is one of my favorites. Inspired by Fernandine Knopf's memories and Giorgio de Chirico's use of opposing perspectives, I digitally illustrated the same person arguing from opposing perspectives. I named the piece Different Perspectives, referring to both the perspectives they were drawn from and the perspective each figure argues from. I took photos of myself from different angles. One was of me making an argument straight on, and the other was listening, lower angle. This simple digital style was a new style for me with no line art and a three-tone block shading, chosen to make the piece focus on the perspective instead of fine line details. Though I am happy with this piece, I would like to try this again with more extreme angles. I think you don't need to talk about what you would improve or things that you didn't like. That's not the point of the portfolio, but I think I included it because this was a theme and topic that I'm quite passionate about, like opposing perspectives, which you'll see later on. And it's something I want to keep working on in my art. So I wanted to show that in the portfolio. Next is Du Kiriko in my neighborhood. I took inspiration from Giorgio Du Kiriko's melancholy and mystery of a street. His ability to take familiar buildings in his area and make them almost unrecognizable through simplification and a logical perspective has always drawn me to his art. Using his style, I decided to reflect the familiar scenery of my apartment area. Through the distortion of the apartment building's perspectives, I tried to capture the calm and solitude I feel when I am home. Du Kirko in my neighborhood was actually one of my assignment pieces for Emily Carr. It's called a studio assignment and 
the prompt I was answering was create something that reflects on the environment where you live, whether it be your home, your neighborhood, your geographic location. So I used that prompt and matched it with this painting that I had actually already done, but it worked well for the prompt. So that's what I picked. In the same slide, I included In the Sun, which was acrylic on canvas. This self-portrait was painted to practice color and shading in intense lightings, like the direct winter sunshine in Japan. The next piece I have is distorted reflection. My sister and I were playing around with a reflective lampshade when I told her to freeze so that I could draw this in my sketchbook. Mirrors and other reflective surfaces are used by people to check what they look like. I find distorted reflections captivating because they deny the expected, accurate mirror image people anticipate. In the CCA portfolio, I combined it with my distorted faces sketchbook page. After being me for 18 years, my face has become one of the most familiar things to me. I wanted to distort this familiar face and draw it, so I pushed and pulled my face in different directions. Pretty straightforward. The next one is um, my family pop portraits, which was also a digital illustration. This piece was an experiment to explore new dimensions in familiar faces. I took inspiration from the bright popping colors of the new retro style and drew my family's faces. The people drawn are me, top left, my sister, top right, my father, bottom left, and my mother, bottom right. I put this in the middle to recapture the attention of the people looking at my portfolio because it can get dull in the middle sometimes, but it also works with the flow that I was setting up with the themes of opposing perspectives and then and like experimenting differently with familiar faces. So for me, I went with more of the flow of the narrative rather than good piece, good piece, medium piece, bad piece good piece kind of order. Next is my short animation Blink. In this digital animation, I wanted to explore how I feel during anxiety attacks. I first feel completely colorless, then my vision becomes blurry and darkness spirals around me. In these moments, I always try to remind myself to breathe and blink. Grayscale colors and sketchy lines were used to convey this feeling. So something that I remember when I worked on this description in particular, I was thinking that I shouldn't just explain what they're seeing because they can see that it's kind of boring, but why I decided to use certain styles and certain choices that I made in my art, why I did that. Next is a watercolor painting. It's very small, 10 by 15 centimeters, and it's called Bruised. This is a scene from one of the stories I have been developing. The protagonist, the hand on the left, is reaching out to see his friend's bruise. I used heavier line weight around the face to show the gravity of the injury while using the finer lines to convey the soft intimacy of the moment. Next is a piece called Mallet, and for the CCA one, I formatted it like this. Micah, I formatted it like this. <laughs> and then Emily Carr, I just showed this but my description was pretty similar. Mallet is a story I have been developing and hope to one day create into a show. Largely inspired by my experience as a percussionist and ex-violinist, the story is about five high school musicians going through various life struggles and expressing themselves through their music. The top image is a sketchbook page in which I drew the protagonists and fleshed out their characters. I then drew the bottom page to play with their expressions. I then wanted to see the characters interacting with each other and their instruments, so I digitally illustrated the middle image. Next was my ceramics pieces. These are my favorite pieces from my beginner ceramics class. I planned each component of the gnomes carefully and was able to combine them perfectly. On the other hand, the face and the hands did not go according to plan, but because the three pieces became beautiful through unintentional cracks, they were combined into one piece called imperfection. I also stepped out of my comfort zone and tried the dipping glaze technique on them. With the roly polies, I challenged myself with the hard ruled up shells. Though it took some trial and error, I ended up having so much fun, I made two more. Then there's my shoes which I actually drew for an application to a different school that I ended up not applying to, but it worked out because it was more of my technical piece. And I just wrote, I drew my favorite pair of shoes. 
This was my first attempt at a realistic pencil drawing because it was, and I was worried that it sucked and they would be like, ah, oh, I guess it's the, her first one, so it's pretty good. But again, I feel like I wouldn't include that if I was applying now, but that's what it says. Um, in my CCA one, I also included the walrus. I went to the aquarium with my friends and met these three walruses. I did not realize how big and absolutely terrifying they are. Their eyes were blood red with black pupils. A girl we were with ran towards the walrus and got excited when it approached her, but I was scared that the walrus was going to eat her. I decided to draw these three walruses and the excited girl in my sketchbook. Next is a sketchbook page called Sumo Wrestlers, and my description is these Ben drawings are studies on sumo wrestlers drawn in my sketchbook to break down their anatomy and movements. I conveyed the energy by varying line weights and swishing the wrestler's mawashi strings. Next is my Nagasaki trip sketches. Our senior class trip was traveling to Nagasaki and learning about its history and culture. On this trip, I saw many art pieces and architecture that inspired me to create more meaningful art. However, what fascinated me the most was the everyday scenery I saw from my hotel window. The buildings seemed to stack up the hills, and there were many complex overcrossings above the busy streets. In this sketch, I tried to capture the cluttered look of the city that I began to love. And on the bottom, one of my fondest memories from this trip was eating out with my friends. I drew the leftover dishes after several meals to capture the memory of my time with friends. Last piece of this portfolio was the Little Elephant Guardsman and it was a process documentation video that I actually made for the Emily Carr process documentation assignment. So I'll play it here. This is the process documentation video for my short digital animation of the Little Elephant Guardsman. The concept for the character came from this traffic light here in Japan. The backside of this traffic light looked like an elephant to me, so I decided to create a character out of it. I went home and drew the initial idea of the elephant in my sketchbook. I made sure that he was very bouncy so that he was fun to animate, but also kept details that made him look like a traffic light. For example, the lights at the front of the traffic lights were attached as his ears. Then I drew a storyboard in my sketchbook about the traffic light transforming into an elephant and working as a traffic guard. I thought it would be endearing if his purpose remained fighting for road safety in his community before and after his transformation. I continued to play around with the character a bit more, trying different poses and different expressions to decide on what kind of character he would be. I then began the animation process for the first part of his story where he comes to life. I drew the sequence in my sketchbook first, then moved it to Clip Studio. I used my sketches to create the movement and made it more fluid in the program. The layer of the finalized line art was then drawn and underneath I added the base colors. I then added the glow for his baton lights, which many guardsmen here in Japan use. I also experimented with shading, but decided not to go with it since I liked it better as it was. And with a few lining details, I had the final sequence. My description read the process documentation video for my short digital animation, The Little Elephant Guardsman, which is just what it is. So that's it for my portfolio, but if you have any questions about this process of applying, I know it can be stressful and confusing, please leave a comment down below or you can DM or text me on Instagram. I think I have the link of it in my description. I know it's a stressful time, but you got this. Good luck and I hope this was helpful and have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.